They've been playing Axis and Allies since 1988, although there have been some gaps of a couple of years in between some of those as I had no one to play with. I can actually tell you the exact date I bought my first copy of Axis and Allies because it's still in my Amazon order history. And it turns out to be June 5th, 2017, which of course June 5th was the initial date chosen for the, the D-Day landings of Normandy 70 or so years before. So as of this video's posting, I've been playing Axis and Allies for just over four years. I've been playing Axis and Allies for about 13 years. It all started with a little game of Classic while I was in high school. I've been playing Axis and Allies for uh, approximately 10 years now, uh, although it's only in the last 5 years or so that I've taken it seriously and started customising my pieces um, and participating in YouTube Wars. What got me into Axis and Allies, honestly, was the box that I saw sitting at the Dufferin Game Room store in the mall in Kingston, Ontario back in 1988, and I just had to have that game. Uh, I had seen no advertising for it, I wasn't part of any gaming group or war gaming club, I had done no war gaming up to that point in my life. And I saw it sitting there, also with Shogun and Fortress America, so I bought all three. Those were the, obviously the Milton Bradley Game Master series. They didn't have broadside, uh, broads, broadsides and boarding parties, so I couldn't pick that one up. I discovered Axis and Allies by sheer chance when the game was mentioned in the comments section of a random unrelated Reddit post. And I just happened to stumble upon the comment. I can't remember the exact details of the post, but someone basically had written about their fond memories playing Axis and Allies, to which someone else responded that it was the best war, war board game ever. And I was intrigued enough to Google it and download a rule book, and I knew straight away that this game was something special, and I've been hooked ever since. So I first got into Axis and Allies when I was in high school. I was dating this girl and she thought that I would enjoy going out to a friend's house to play this game. And she was absolutely right. And I have been playing ever since, much to her dismay. I've been fortunate to have participated in World War II reenacting all over Europe, uh, walking the battlefields and sleeping in the field uh, off the side of armored vehicles. Um, and it was after my second or third trip to the sites of the Battle of the Bulge uh, that I started looking for games uh, on that on that topic. Um, and I stumbled onto the Axis and Allies Battle of the Bulge game. The first Axis and Allies game you owned? Well, there you go, the original. And what game do you wish you owned? Uh... A game I wish I owned, that's a, if you're just talking Axis and Allies style, uh, I have I have all the ones that I want. I even have some I don't really play that often, like Guadalcanal, uh, don't really get to play that too often. So, um, yeah, I, I am in want of nothing. I've been blessed to have all of the, all of the, the ones that I have wanted to play. 1942 second edition was the first game of Axis and Allies, first board game ever that I ever bought, um, even outside of Axis and Allies. Um, board gaming is not something I've really done much of up until I bought Axis and Allies four years ago, and now it's something that I've really gotten into. So, so thanks Axis and Allies. Um, if I could own any other version, it would probably be 1914, because there, there don't seem to be many copies of it going around at the moment. And if you want to buy it at the moment, at least here in the UK, you've got to spend like stupid money. Uh, the annoying thing is I saw it available to buy a couple of years ago for what I now think is a reasonable price, about 70 or 80 pounds, and I didn't buy it. Um, so I wish I had back then bought two copies, kept one and sold one because yeah, I'd be laughing now. The first game I ever owned was Classic. It was just fate. After that first day of playing, I ended up going home and buying my first one on eBay that same night. I have a few from my collection that I'm missing, like Anniversary, Guadalcanal, and Battle of the Bulge. 
But if I don't ever get a hold of them, it's not going to be the end of the world for me. So my first game was indeed uh, Battle of the Bulge, uh, which I absolutely love. Um, I then um, I then purchased 1942 Second Edition, um, an anniversary, and then the collection's grown into G40, BBR, um, and recently Guadalcanal. Uh, the game I wish I owned um, is the original Pacific game, um, and then in my eyes, I've um, I've got the collection. What's your favorite game in the Axis and Allies series? Well, that's a tough one because my favorite games are always tied to who I'm playing with. So if they're enjoyable people, the game's enjoyable. Uh, I think playing BBR is a lot of fun with the characters I get to play with. I think Anniversary is a lot of fun with the people I get to play with. Uh, I think just the out-of-box Global 40 or YG's version is fun to play. I haven't been able to play the newest YG version though. Um, but they're a lot of fun to play. Um, one that I really enjoy that doesn't get a lot of a lot of love around the community. People say it's a good game, but doesn't get a lot of love is the um, Axis and Allies uh, Europe and Pacific. The ones that came out in '99 and 2000, I believe. Those ones are my uh, some of my favorites to play. Again, with the right people, and I've been able to play those with my nephews, and uh, they're a lot of fun to play with. My favorite game in the series has got to be Global 1940. I mean, I just love how big it is. It's ridiculously big. It's bigger than I am tall, and I think a lot of us forget just how ridiculous that is, really. Um, especially for people who aren't really into board games. But um, it's awesome. Um, I love the extra units that it adds, like mech and tacticals and air bases and the like. Um, as I said, the size of the map is just incredible. And I'm also getting into BBR at the moment, which adds even more rules and more ways to win. So there's even more strategic options that you've got at your disposal. Um, so love it. Love global. Love BBR. But if I haven't got time or the space for that kind of scale of game, then I would probably go with 1942 Second Edition for the sake of convenience. I'd have to say that 1914 is probably my favorite version of the game because it is just so complex and difficult to really have a good game that it just sucks for everybody and that makes it more fair. Having been to the Bulge many times, uh, it should come as no surprise that the Battle of the Bulge is my favourite game. Um, I really like the mechanics of the fuel supplies, uh, the way that they act as a hindrance for the German player. Uh, but I also like the way that the Allies have to play an aggressive defence uh, in order to hold the German advance. My favourite nation to play and why? Uh, again, it depends on the version, but if we're just talking the, a global version, I I think it's really tough to not like playing um, the Axis powers in the Global 40, uh, uh, whether it's BBR or YGs or out of box. Germany, you just have so many options. There's so many things you can do. Uh, the Allies tend to be reactionary if you've got good uh, Axis players, the Allies are kind of on their heels. So on the Axis, I, I definitely like that. Um, Japan as well, you know, fantastic to play. So I think I think I would lead towards more the Axis. On the Allies side, though, definitely UK. Um, UK is the, is the one I really enjoy playing. I like the the idea of a global economy and uh, being able to strike from a variety of places around the globe. I think that's a lot of fun. It makes it a bit more engaging than the U.S., even though your economy is uh, slightly less than the U.S. I don't really have a favorite nation to play as, but I do have a favorite side, and that is the Allies. Um, I like playing as the good guys, um, and I feel like they offer a little bit of everything. You've got a defensive game as Russia. You've got a spread out, multiple front game as the U.K., and the US just has loads of money to spend uh, and you can choose if you want to focus on the Atlantic or the Pacific side so that's nice. 
If I had to pick just one though, I would go with the UK, I think, um, as a Brit, of course. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice, I think, to potentially have an impact on all parts of the board. So uh, yeah, UK would be my choice. In any version, my favorite nation to play is Japan. I love the challenge of fighting a naval and a land war. I love the simulated Pacific combat. It just, it's, it's my favorite. I really enjoy playing Japan uh, for the quick introduction to action um, and also the US as their economy lets you make uh, the game your own. But my favorite nation is Germany, uh, partly because I haven't mastered how to play them um, and they have the added challenge of taking on a strong UK, US and Russia um, player. And I guess I just enjoy the challenges and headaches that come with playing Germany. My favorite customization, uh, you know what, I, I think when people paint their pieces up, I think that's the, the thing I really enjoy. Um, uh, Panzer King, the pieces that he has sent me, um, although he, he, by his own claims, you know, he hasn't you know, put all the effort in that uh, other people who have, you know, got camouflage on their tanks and their planes and their infantry and the painted faces on their infantry and all that. He's focused a lot more on the uh, less is more concept. And so those look just so good on my board. Um, so I think that's probably my favorite customization is the, the, the nice paints uh, that uh, Panzer King has sent me. Hell on Wheels recently sent me a set of UK planes, which he'd magnetized, um, along with a bunch of flight stands. And I am just in love with them. Um, they just look amazing on the board and clicking a plane onto a flight stand is just so satisfying. So now I've got to, uh, I've got to get the rest of my planes magnetized and I've got to make up a bunch of uh, extra flight stands so I've got enough for the whole board and I just can't wait to have that project complete. Best customization, definitely flight stands. Well, my favorite customization would have to be my home built table. I, I did it myself. I'm not a carpenter by any means, but I put a lot of time and effort and energy into researching and figuring out how to do it and then getting what I needed and getting it done. There wasn't really a lot of trial and error. I just kind of did it. And it is my favorite probably because I've invested the most time and energy in it. Well, the last five years have really seen me start my customization journey. Uh, I've made homemade flight stands, uh, printed custom maps, um, bought custom pieces. But my favorite has to be my, my custom table. Um, there's been some long hours put into it, but it really allows the game to take center stage. The aspect of World War II that interests me the most Honestly, I think it's the individual stories. I, I think it's the minutiae of the war. Um, you know, if we're going to talk about D-Day, okay, that's fine. But I want to find out what happened to that platoon, right? I want to find out what happened to that small group of guys that snuck up a cliff and did some damage. Uh, I want to find out about the people who, you know, um, are doing subterfuge, uh, you know, spy networks, things like that, uh, raids, you know, raids that that maybe uh, helped end the war or uh, you know kept certain places alive uh, in order to keep the fight going that's that's what interests me is the small stories um, because those really are the 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 stories that make up the, the tapestry that is world war ii right those millions literally millions of stories uh, are what makes world war ii uh, what it is I find pretty much any historical era interesting, but um, World War II is particularly interesting to me because of how recent it was. Uh, like, I'm sure we all know someone who was alive and lived through the war, still has memories of it, and is still alive today. And um, that's something that I find pretty crazy when I think about it. Um, there are so many topics and aspects of World War II, and they are all so interesting. Um, but I've got to pick just one, and that's kind of hard to do, but 
Um, I will pick uh, Nazi Germany and the rise and fall of the Third Reich. Um, I have family living in, in Germany, in Berlin, so Berlin is a place which I've visited quite often. Uh, I've been to see the Berlin Wall, I've seen the Reichstag, I've seen all of that. There's still bullet holes in some of the buildings over there. Um, so it's just a really interesting place to visit. So as far as World War II is concerned, there are many things that interest me. And first and foremost, war is hell. And it really is a shame humanity can't get its crap together and just be nice to one another. But the most interesting aspect of World War II would have to be, for me, the combat in the Pacific theater. It's always fascinated me. It's always been something that I've researched and looked up and looked into because it's just fascinating. So I like exploring the, the less known stories. Um, for example, everyone knows about the 101st at Bastogne, but not many people know the story of the 99th Infantry at Elsenborn Ridge uh, that held up and delayed the German Northern advance during the early days of the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, likewise, the story of the mini sub crews that crept ashore in Normandy to take soil samples um, so that they could be analysed to make sure that tanks could actually get off the beaches uh, on D-Day proper. Um, I think it's important that you know, if we don't focus or remember everyone um, who participated, their stories um, could be lost or have their the narratives absorbed and amalgamated into other units. If you could be a World War II general, who would it be and why? Well, somebody on the Allies. <laughs> Hate losing. Um, it'll probably sound a little selfish, but I think um, Zhukov. Um, and and not not for any reason other than he was told to go do a job and he did it. And there was, from what I've read, and I haven't I haven't dived completely into his life, but I think that as you as you look at Zukov's decision making and all the rest, it was very much what's best for the motherland. If I could be anyone from World War II, um, I would aspire to be someone like. Jack Churchill, who was a completely nuts officer. Um, he went to war armed with a longbow, bagpipes, and a broadsword. And there was uh, an operation called Operation Archery, funnily enough, um, in which he was among the first to land on the beaches of Norway. And he did so playing the, playing the bagpipes. He was playing March of the Cameron Men. Then he lobbed a grenade and then charge into battle. I mean, what a complete legend. So honestly, I would probably be George S. Patton because I'm smart and bullheaded and I get things done. I think that would be a good fit. Well, there's some great generals to choose from, um, but I think I would go for Heinz Guderian. Um, to be there at the beginning as the tactics and technology evolved um, to create the, the German Blitzkrieg must have been incredible. Um, to have all that, that power at your disposal um, and know that really you're the, the pioneers of um, combined arms. Lastly, if not playing ANA, what else gets a game time? Uh, Again, depends on the people I'm with. I uh, play a lot of the, what are called German games, right? Where it's victory points. Uh, you're typically resource management. You, you got your little uh, resources or meeples or what have you. Um, I used to play a lot of Catan and variations on it, but that's those kind of are gone now. I enjoy things like Power Grid, um, Scythe. That's a good game. Um, Puerto Rico, even that's that's pretty old now. Like 25 years old, but uh, it's a fun game. Um, so I really enjoy that. And you know what? If the right people are around, I'll sit down and play a few hours of Texas Hold'em. And uh, I really enjoy that. I, I love I love the game within the game with uh, when you play poker. So. 
other than the eight or so Axis and Allies games I have, um, I don't actually have that many board games. Um, I do have Memoir 44, and uh, I do enjoy the occasional game of that for a quick fix. And I do also enjoy a good game of chess. And I know there are a ton of other great war board games out there, and I really look forward to exploring those and, and getting into those. But um, I'm pretty sure Axis and Allies will always be my favorite war board game. So if I'm not playing Axis and Allies, I'm usually playing with my kiddos. I've got right now a four and a half year old son, a two year old daughter and a two month old daughter. And so we play games on TV, on the Wii console, or we play Candyland, or we play Go Fish, or we play kickball outside, or we, we swing, or we run, and just playing with my kiddos. That's So for a World War II fix, uh, I go to Escape to Colditz or Memoir 44. Uh, but we play a lot of Catan, Carcassonne, Gloomhaven. Uh, another game that comes out is Battle Cry. Uh, the American Civil War game that's based on the Memoir 44 mechanics. Um, and as Kurt mentioned, um, I'm happy to give most games a go, um, as long as the company's good.